We good now. show where two luscious talk about sports and get drunk while they do it that's us thank you everybody for joining us today on facebook live our podcast is coming out later this week mm -hmm. on apple Podcasts, soundcloud wherever you listen to things yeah uh, while you're here be sure to follow us on facebook twitter instagram using the hash uh, using the handle you for a podcast uh also to catch our live videos since we're here every monday make sure that your notifications are on yeah your facebook so you can be good and watch us and all this other stuff, and it'll let you know automatically when we're having shows. We we love when you guys watch us live because then um then you interact with us and and we can yell at you and berate you. It, this really isn't a good sales pitch for them watching us live, but uh, we love when you guys join us live. So it's, it's a highly interactive show, and we love that you're here. Yeah, joining us. Uh, that's that's the thing. That's the thing. Uh, we only have one more show uh, until the end of our season after this one. Mm -hmm. This so, is the one before the end. The one before the end. So our last show of the season is next week, but um, 
no fear. We will have lots of content for you over the summer. Everybody better watch the episode next week. Everybody better watch our finale. Yeah, seriously, because y'all don't know how much you're going to miss us when we're gone. Mm -hmm. We have lots of stuff planned for the break, but still, everybody yeah. watch the finale. Yeah. Because there will be surprises, maybe. Ooh. We'll see. Ooh. Fun, fun, fun. That's exciting. Let's drink. Drinking yeah. sounds fun. Let's do a, a what, shot. Here. What have we today? Uh, these are bombs. These are orange bombs. Chars. Chars. Give me the cling one more time. There we oh, go. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's the sound. That's the, that's the good stuff. Oh, oh God. Man. Oh, man. We're <laughs> so not ready for this. <laughs> It feels like like noon right now. I know, seriously. Yeah. We were like, cling, yeah. Oh, no. Okay. It's a big shot. It is a big shot. I'm still My gonna... apologies. That's fine. Oy. Ooh, 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 good ooh. job. Good job, baby. Thank Got you. It. For those of you who uh, have been on our Facebook, she did some stand-up last week. Oh, yeah, I did that. I completely forgot. It's good. It's funny. It's up on our Facebook page. Also on our Facebook and Instagram are, or just our Facebook, are the fictional football drafts that Paul and I did. Yeah, and uh, I finally, I haven't gotten, <laughs> I did start finally listening to this episode I missed. I haven't gotten that far. Um, it was interesting to hear you guys talking a lot of basketball. Yeah? Yeah, I like talking, talking a lot about I basketball. I like talking about basketball. Basketball is my, the sport that I am least knowledgeable about mm -hmm. but i can i can paul threw a lot of stuff out he um, did. i thank you paul again for coming on and uh we're um we'll we'll have him back soon don't worry appreciate you paul you're the best yes mm -hmm. absolutely um should we do our polls for the week yeah let's do it we had three of them we actually like had good polls this week first question was when you wash your hands in a public restroom with a folded paper towel do you unfold the paper towel all the way before drying your hands yeah this came to me um because I had a really plush paper towel that was folded in a public room. I was like, oh, it's so nice. Like, oh, I'm gesturing vaguely with my hands right now. Um, the podcast listeners, it was really nice. But I always unfold my paper towel all the way to maximize the paper towel. It's good for the environment, too. I agree. I have, so I do like a combination of both. I unfold and then I refold. I think I, I open it if it's, like, done like hot dog style. Yeah. I unfold it and then make it hamburger style for some reason. I don't know. It gets better volume and it fits my hands better. I'm usually just kind of, my objective is to get the fuck out of there as fast as I can. Oh, okay. Because usually, even if it's like a private one, like I like to, I want to go see my friends and if it's public, I just don't want to be in there. It doesn't take me like a minute to do it. It's just like an, un, just unfold and fold over and one, two, three. I just kind of like shake it out and then like. When you have one of those electric ones, how many do you take? Uh, hopefully just one. Just one? Hopefully, but those aren't as usually good quality of paper. They're yeah. not as absorbent. So sometimes I will take two. I, I don't usually take more than two. Always three for me. What? Yeah, always three. God! I, uh, I feel like my hands are always, like, clogged with water. There's just so much water on my hands after I wash them. That is a thing. I actually, uh, my biggest pet peeve, um, like, physically is having wet hands. I do not like having wet hands whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, if it if it takes more to get them dry, then yes, I will absolutely. But again, my objective is get out of there as fast as I can. So I like wash my hands, and then if they're still wet, I that's when I'm like wiping on my clothes and everything. But just because it's irritating to me, can't do that either. Because then it just gets all over my clothes, and there's handprints on the pants and all that stuff. Uh, but particularly if there's a line. Like, if there's a line of people and I'm, like, in the way when I'm trying to, like, get to the paper towels. Also, girls have purses, too. Like, sometimes you might have a bag. But, like, I don't want to have my purse on the wet counter for very long. So, like, if it's not, like, a crossbody or something. So, I don't want to, like, like, I just want to get in and get out when gotcha. it comes to sinks in okay. public restrooms. Anyways, as far as you guys go, 56% of you guys do not unfold your paper towels. And 44% of you do. You animals. You animals. Um, how many Q-tips do you use in a day? I mean, if I see them, I will probably use one. Right. But it's really just the one. Probably one max. Okay. One side for one ear, the other side for the other ear. Right. This is a deeply, deeply personal thing. See, but every time I'm I... I'm just realizing this now, that how, like, oh, man, this is our, like, basic hygiene habits here. No, no, but for me, it's like every time I go into <laughs> a restroom and I see that there are Q-tips... 
like I'm gonna use one. Like we have them pretty out in the open in our bathroom here at our house. Yeah. So like every time I go in, my habit is to like grab one and use one. I probably use like six Q-tips a day. It's really satisfying when you walk into a bathroom and you see like a whole box of Q-tips. Mm -hmm. It's very, it makes me happy to see it. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, oh wow, look at all this ear cleaning I can do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's satisfying. Like, it's a satisfying feeling also to have a Q-tip in your ear. It's gross. I'm so sorry. 57% said that they use zero to one, and 43% said that they use more than one. In a day. In a day. Um, I mean, I, it, it's not like I, every day you're saying you use? Every day I use, like, like four to six. Oh, my days. God. How? I have really clean ears. Oh, it's so... only. <laughs> it's only if I ever see one. It's not like I go, yeah, I but actively I go to. see them. It's not a part of my morning routine. I mean, like, yours, I yours are out, though. Yeah, they're like, like, I know that they are on the shelf that is, like, directly next to where, like, all my extra toothpaste is, like, in between that and, like, our toilet. So I always just grab one if I'm going to the sink. Oh. It's, I don't know, it's a weird habit, and I should probably stop. I guess that's why my average is zero to one, because I don't see them every day, and I don't use them every day. Right. That's probably why. Third poll which will bring us into our main conversation about sports because we're still a, a sports program. We are a sports program, right? <laughs> and we like to talk about sports on our oh, show. All these polls are just drunk. Pressing the ball. Yeah. Will funny. the Cardinals ditch out on Josh Rosen? 67% of you said yes, and 33% of you said no. What do you think? Well, um... Before we do this, let's crack open a beer. Let's crack open a beer. Uh, I'm going to drink this. I'm going to do labels. No. But... Um, I'm gonna drink a rose beer. Yes, please. I'm I have my magic. I have my magic belt on today. He's got a Boston beer that shall remain re nameless. Even though we've named it before on previous shows. Yeah, whatever. Here you go. Um, cheers. Mmm. Ah, just delicious, good. refreshing. Tastes like springtime. It needs oh springtime. Don't even start. I'm ready. Um. So, uh, as far as this Josh Rosen thing, though, um, it uh. This week, we've been watching a lot of the NFL scouting combine. Uh, Kyler Murray isn't doing drills. He's just straight up meeting with Arizona. Um, Arizona, as we all know, has the number one uh, overall draft pick. Um, now, the question, of course, is because Josh Rosen is young, and he was their first-round pick last year. Yep. Um, and he didn't even play. I mean, he didn't start the whole season. Sam Bradford did. Um, he got hurt. Mm -hmm. Um, are, are they going to get rid of him is really, is the question that we posed here. But there's also the question of if they don't get rid of him, will they still draft Kyler Murray? There are a whole bunch of different factors in play. Um, I don't think Josh Rosen will be traded. Um, but if he was, I would consider him on the Giants. Of course you would. I, I would consider it. I'm not, like, thrilled about the idea. Um, I'd rather him over Dwayne Haskins. I'd rather Kyler Murray or both. But um, I, I I don't think they're going to get rid of him. And, and even if they do sign Kyler Murray, because that would be, like, a very hard thing to do is, like, have two young quarterbacks on the team. Kind of, so I'd try to get them some kind of trial run. Yeah, like, that, that's a very Cardinals thing. Like, to you're going to turn into the Ravens and use – two quarterbacks or the Saints or whatever. Yeah. This new stupid thing that they're doing. It's a really interesting situation that Arizona's in to have a top ten pick from last year and have a top have the number one pick this year and potentially have both of them be quarterbacks. Right. And really like commit to both of them. Right. I suppose. I mean Cliff Kingsbury has said that it is a, a done deal. But Which, we never but like a week ago he was like, oh no, Josh Rosen's our guy. Yeah, but also, like, two weeks before that, Kyle Murray's agent was like, yeah, he's going to be at spring training for the A's. It's very, it's very confusing. So I don't know, re I really don't know who to believe. I feel like there's not not much loyalty here. Either that or people are trying to uh, confuse each other with what's right. happening. Right. I think that it, it's, like, if it is true that Kingsbury wants to go with Kyle Murray, mm -hmm. then I don't really see why they would commit to Josh Rosen. Because he had, he had his test and it didn't work out. And if they were going to trade a quarterback... He's also a rookie quarterback. Like, Well, Kyler Murray's going to be a rookie quarterback, too. I know, but... Who's to say that he's not going to suffer the same fate as Josh Rosen was? But he's not. He's not. Okay. Kyler Murray is an elite NFL quarterback. 
He's he is already hasn't he's, even he's been drafted yet. I know, but we know this. Oh come on, no we don't. Yeah we do. No yeah, we don't. We People do. thought Sam Bradford was an elite NFL quarterback. Come on, right, right. give me a break. Bad teams make me so angry. Bad teams make me angry because, especially when they're like a train wreck on all fronts. Right. I feel like this this idea of a franchise quarterback is so it's such like a disillusioned idea. Because if your team sucks on so many different fronts, quarterback is not a position where you can just drop somebody in and they're going to be a generational talent. At least that's not what we've seen in the last couple of years. Right. It takes them a while to get into it. Well, and so I feel like if you don't improve on other fronts, then this quarterback thing is just going to be another brick in the wall. How, but how long, how long is a while? Like, how long are we talking? What does it take for a quarterback to become a franchise quarterback like maybe Jared Goff? Or, I if mean, he's got the right pieces around him, it has the potential to be – you could probably drop somebody in there. But for a team like Arizona that's in shambles everywhere, it's not it, – Arizona's not a team where you can drop a quarterback in there who was good in college and expect him to win a Super Bowl. Not win a Super Bowl, but at least be successful. Uh, and, cha- and change the fate of the team. Can I throw a curveball at you? Yeah. What about the Cowboys? Dak Prescott. Yeah, the Cowboys had the, have an amazing offensive line. They also picked up Ezekiel Elliott, who didn't, who who, who helped a well, lot. And this is another. I mean, I guess this is the time then where we would question what Arizona would do with the number one pick if they don't select Kyler Murray. Well, I mean, obviously they have a lot of issues with their offensive line, um, and that's also. I mean, we're going to get into this later, but the Giants really. I I think the Giants really need to focus on their line during the draft because now they've got issues on both sides of the ball. Um, again, we'll get into this later. If they if they don't pick Murray, then they should pick Nick Bosa. Right. That's just the obvious thing. He's right. the best player in the draft coming up. Right. Even though he's on defense, I mean, why not? Why wouldn't you take the best player out there? I guess, but but, but what about the line? Again, we we need to consider where where their weakest link is because that's what these at least these top ten picks need to be for Arizona. It's everywhere though. And I think if you can if you can get better on if you can get better in any position, you may as well pick a defensive lineman who's going to be you know dropped in and and ready to go. I guess I don't know. I think because what, the biggest issue you have to deal with as a defensive lineman coming out of college is being double teamed by offensive linemen. Do you think Josh Rosen is going to get sacked by by Arizona? I don't think so. No, I think they'll be dumb, and I think they'll they'll screw it up. If they pick Kyler Take Murray, Rosen's mm-hmm. going to be the starter week one, probably. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't know. But I think that they'll – if they pick Kyler Murray, they'll find a way to screw it up. And it'll just make things worse for Arizona. R.I.P. R.I.P. Cliff Kingsbury, I was so happy for you when you got the job. Yeah. Now I'm just worried. Did you see that guy, DK Metcalf? <laughs> and his 1.9% body fat? What is that? That dude's an absolute freak. He's I, a robot. I saw a bunch of memes online. <laughs> there was uh, – it's basically like there's a situation – and it's like, your meal is, uh, oh, no, it was for college. It was a college tuition meme. And it was like, um, <clears throat> college, your tuition is $25,000. And then it says, DK Metcalf, I only have $10. And then it shows a picture of him just, like, standing there like this, and he's jacked. And uh, the college is like, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. You go right ahead. Yeah. The dude's a freak. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know that one could survive with less than 1.9 body fat. I just, I don't understand, like, as that that sounds it's literally mental. I feel like robots have more body fat than DK Metcalf. I hope he doesn't end up somewhere like Buffalo, because then he's gonna have to like, you know, pack on the pack on the pounds there in order to survive the cold. Uh, right. Yeah, I know that was <laughs> we were watching ESPN earlier, and that was a concern. Um, I think, uh, or you know, Seattle or Detroit or anyway. Se- Seattle's still out. Seattle is still outside, and Detroit has to play in like Green Bay. Yeah, I don't know. It's nuts. The dude's a freak anyways, though. And then there was that guy, Montez Sweat, from... Uh, Wait, no! Montez Sweat! Oh, my God! He had a 4 4 one 40-yard dash, which is the, <laughs> the best out of any defensive lineman ever in the history of the combine. It's fucking nuts. Animal. Absolutely fucking nuts. Also, his last name is Sweat, which is funny. Yeah. Montez yeah. Sweat. Lots of good names in this in this draft. Yeah, what, actually... was that, what was that name? Rock? Rock Yassin? Is that his name? Remember him? Yeah. I said the Patriots were talking. No, I know. Him. I just don't know if that's correct. He's a quarterback. But there's um, a, and then there's a. Yeah, Rock, Rock Yassin. Yeah, Rock Yassin. And then uh, Joe. 
Oh, Jawan. Jawan, spelled Jawan. Jawan Williams. Uh, great spelling. Yes. I like the originality. I'm Joe, all for it. Jawan. Really fucking cool, dude. He's a, uh, a defensive back from Vanderbilt. Jawan Williams. I'm really excited to see um to see what's gonna come out of this combine and as we I mean honestly guys it's so weird like it feels like the Super Bowl was five thousand years ago because it was and the draft is five minutes away even though it's not even though it's not it's another month and a half away yeah Fun. it's not it's like we're closer to the Super Bowl than we are to the draft technically oh my god crazy. which is crazy you wanna, um but you want to move on yeah let's do it. Uh, Jason Witten will come out of retirement and return to the Cowboys. This is the big news of the week. This is nuts. Jason Witten is back. Uh, my question, I posed this question, who won this? The Cowboys, Witten, or Monday Night Football? Everybody won this. Everybody won this thing. The Cowboys get better. Jason Witten goes back to playing football. No. Monday Night Football gets another, a different com uh, color commentary guy. Everybody wins this. The I, world is great. No. Jason Witten is back. Absolutely not. Why? No. I think Monday Night Football won this, for sure. Yeah, no um, kidding. I think maybe Jason Witten won this. I don't really know what um, – I, I don't know if details on his contract have been released yet. Yes, they have. Okay. Uh, is is he making more playing football than he will be for ESPN? It is a one-year deal. I doubt it's I doubt it's more money than he would if he were on uh, on Monday Night Football. Now, it's, like, it's like a one-year, like, $3.5 million deal. Look, an argument could be made that – One year, $5 million. That's the contract. Okay. I, I, I think, which is like nothing. Um, I think that an argument could be made that uh, Witten, having had a year in the booth now, analyzing defenses and plays and learning all kinds of different schemes that are happening, um, that the Cowboys will have this kind of different perspective on teams that they don't traditionally play. Um, that said, I do do not I, I mean I just don't understand how this guy thinks that he can come out of retirement after not playing the game for a year being on the road I mean he's probably obviously he's still in very good shape and everything because he must be if he's job. going back to play football but like there's no way he's in the same shape he was and I just don't think I don't think the Cowboys won this whatsoever do you really think he like doesn't go to the gym no that's not what I'm saying at all but like when he, you're not consistently on. every single day running drills and and working with playbooks, like physically, I mean, I because obviously, I completely disagree with you. I it's just, not. It's not like he like sat on the couch and like got fat for a year. No, of course not. But I don't think he's about to do anything serious coming out of retirement, except to maybe hurt himself. Okay, I don't. Okay, uh, like I just, I, I just don't see how this is a good idea for him. Why wouldn't it be a good idea? Cowboys. I just say, I just say, if it, if it, you think it might work, go ahead. I think the, I think the Cowboys get better with this. They've already got you know Prescott, who's who's got some confidence back after a great second half of the year, thanks to like Amari Cooper, who's going to be back next year, right. and Ezekiel Elliott. Sure. And their defense is underrated. I think the Cowboys' defense is underrated. I, I think Jason, having Jason Witten back as I think not only a, not only a good player but a veteran presence in the locker room. I think the Cowboys are a force to be reckoned with next year. I I watch out for them. Seriously. I don't like it. The whole thing about the Cowboys is that they were this. For the past couple of years, they've been this, like, young team. Uh -huh. And they just significantly aged themselves. You know what Amari Cooper gave them? Of, I, Amari Cooper, I'm not saying, this isn't a conversation about Amari Cooper. No, I know it's not, but it gave the Cowboys confidence. They went, they basically, they almost ran the table in the second half of last season. And now to have, like, their star tight end return to the fold? I don't like it. In a dramatic homecoming? I don't like it. The Cowboys are going to win the division next year. I apologize that, you know, the Giants aren't included in that. But I don't think they are either. But I'm, it's a great, this is a great thing for Dallas. I completely disagree. We're yeah. going to see. I, I can see this being one of our, our coming bets is exactly how productive will Witten be. And it, right. I mean, we don't know. So someone write that down. We don't know how productive Jason Witten will be. I don't be. think he's going to be productive at all. Because he could be there just for, like, moral support. Like, Antonio Gates was re-signed by the Chargers last year and didn't do a damn thing. Right. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, as far as Monday Night Football, though, is concerned, maybe they can just take Booger McFarland and put him up in the booth and get him off. Yeah, that would probably be a good Get him off the Booger Mobile and just have Tessator and McFarland in the booth. I, I wouldn't hate that. I think that's a good place for Booger. I like sense. Booger. I just – he was kind of annoying on the field this year. It was just the – the obnoxious crane thing. That's really all that it was yeah, for me. Yeah, all right. Yeah. 
uh, Tony Romo is still the best guy in the biz. Um, should we move on? Sure. More things that happened. Nick Foles is a free man. Goodbye, Foles. See you, Foles. Um, by the way, I think it's a terrible move. I think if you're going to get rid of one of those quarterbacks, you get rid of Wentz. Agreed. Um, I, I'm surprised you agree with me because it seems like everybody else disagrees with me. Wentz is the guy. He was I've drafted saying, I've been saying, overall, blah, blah, blah. I've been saying for weeks that Wentz, uh, months that Wentz is made of glass and they should hang on to Foles and trade Wentz because you can get more for Wentz than you can get for Foles. Yeah, I agree. I, um, are, are, I mean, he's free. Uh, the Jags want his ass. Um, when the league opens, the Jaguars have said that they will be signing him. Yes, exactly. Because so the, it's Eagles, gonna the Eagles did not put the franchise tag on him, and so Foles will be a free agent when free agency begins soon, next week. Yeah. Um, who are we happier for, the Jags or Foles? Oh, Nick Foles, because he's going to be a starter. I'm happy. He's going to be Jags. starting, for sure. I don't know that it really like makes the Jaguars any better. I think that there are other they have other problems. Like, their offense is still one-dimensional. Sure. But I'm happy for Nick Foles that he's finally getting a chance to start Mm -hmm. because he deserves it because he's a good quarterback. He's shown that he's, you know, worthy of a starting job. Yeah, but, I mean, he could go start for a team that that just needs him to complete their package, go win another Super Bowl. It is is Tom Coughlin. Yeah, but, I mean, look, here's the thing. Well, yeah, I know, but... Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying, is that Tom Coughlin has a... Is a uh, he took Eli Manning to two Super Bowls. Yeah. Two Super Bowl wins. I just... Come the, on. The Jags do need more work, and Nick Foles probably has a year and a half, maybe two years more... What? A, as a starter. As a starter. You don't think he can play into his 30s? He's 29. I know, I know, but he's also, like this kind of big question mark. Like, obviously we've seen him do really well with the Eagles, um, who are a very well-rounded team, um, all things considered, I mean. Uh, You throw him on a team where he doesn't have that kind of help, and automatically the first thing everybody does is blame the quarterback. Which is golden age thinking. Which is is stupid. It's very stupid, but you know that that's a very strong possibility. When he's starting and he's throwing the ball, and we also know the Broncos are not a team that likes to commit to their quarterbacks. Right. So he could end up on the bench after a season and a half, maybe even halfway through his first season. Did you say the Broncos just now? Yeah. The Jags. I'm so about? sorry. The Jags. I'm about? so, so sorry. The um, Bills. The Bills. That's what we're talking about. The Bills. Stop. We're not doing this again. The Philadelphia Billies. We're not doing this again. Oh, my. So Let's sorry. rewind. Try that again. <laughs> I meant the Jaguars. They're not one to commit to a quarterback. Right. They've been doing this shuffle now. I don't for know. A while. That, I don't know that they're a team not. The to Broncos commit. are also not. True. Yes. Commit, but right. I, the Jaguars. Wait. I mean, you can't really say that they can't commit to quarterbacks when Blake Bortles just flat out sucked. He was yeah. just. He was just not good. Yeah. And so they benched him because he was not good and tried to give whoever it was a chance. Cody Kessler. Who was it? Was it Cody Kessler? It was Cody Kessler. Anyways, so I think Foles will be in there for a good amount of this season. I And if he sucks, they've got Blake Bortles, and maybe Bortles is ready to prove himself after being benched. You think they're going to keep Bortles? Yeah, why wouldn't they keep Bortles? Who are they going to get when they trade him? I don't know. Come on. I feel like they're paying Bortles a lot of money. Yeah, they are, because they invested in him to be their so, future starting quarterback. He brought them to an AFC Championship uh, game. So get, no. But then get, he was get exposed. your money back. Go spend it somewhere else and give Nick Foles some weaponry. My God. They've got a great uh, – they've got – no, no, that's true. They are a one-dimensional offense. Yep, yep. That is what I have said. You, yep. But they're still going to hang on to Blake Bortles. I don't see a reason why they wouldn't. I don't know. I'm I'm not feeling it, guys. I'm not feeling it. Uh, so that's that's Nick Foles. I guess let's move on to the topic that I really least want to talk about, but I'm going to post. Least it. want to talk. All right, go ahead. Because I did some research on this because I don't know shit about the Giants. All right, so, so Olivier Vernon is allegedly on the trading block. Landon Collins, um, his potential franchise tag is not going to happen. Um, that's not official. It's just not going to happen, though. Um, what's the plan for the defense? The Giants' defense, particularly when there are so many issues on the offense. I don't fucking know, guys. <laughs> like, my God. What's the problem? Who knows? Can't we just... <laughs> I, I don't understand. Do you know 
So you're suffering on one side of the ball. How are you going to go and fuck up what's happening on the other side of the ball too? I just, now look, here's the thing. I've come up with a plan. We're going to fix this. I just, or I'm going to fix this hypothetically because these motherfuckers aren't doing shit. The New York Giants, the Giants, if you're watching. Here's what, here's what needs to happen. Here we go. Now, Landon Collins will hold out if he's tagged. So I like this idea of not tagging him. Let's let him go. He can go and get his money elsewhere. There's no point in keeping him. Um, our, uh, our defensive coordinator, James Betcher, uh, he's spent a lot of time with a cornerback, Teron Matthew. The honey badger, Tyron Matthew. Yeah. Um, he's on the Texans right now. And uh, your boy, Trey Flowers, um, he was the fourth highest rated edge rusher this year on the Patriots, and I'm down to pay him, too. Because he's going to be a free agent this year as well. Exactly. Right. We've got a few different options for, for our defense in free agency that I think we need to jump on as soon as motherfucking possible. That way um, we can draft and fix the offensive line. I think that is our goal there. Um, I, I think the defense is salvageable with free agency. The offense needs work. I agree. So the question is... Well, I'll let you talk first. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I agree that the defense can be uh, – some holes in the defense can be patched in free agency. Mm -hmm. My big um, signing for you guys would be Morris Claiborne, quarterback from the Jets. Okay. Because he – I think he fits in well with uh, with your, your, like, your, your defensive man coverage scheme. I also think that you can get him for cheap as well. Okay. So I think, I think he'll fit in well. Uh, Tyron Matthew would also be a good, uh, a good call. The price tag would be a lot steeper, though. Sure. Yeah. It's not like we don't have the money. That's true, but I'm just saying, if you're gonna if you're gonna pick somebody up who you want to get for cheap, right? I think you can get Morris Claiborne for cheap, and I think you'd fit in well. Nice. Another uh, so in the draft, you could probably pick up uh, people like well, as far as defense goes, Josh Allen is a good one, uh, linebacker from Kentucky. Not to be confused with the other Josh Allen. Right. Who we just that's Josh Rosen, the other Josh Allen. Uh, uh, Jack, I, uh, Jack I Poli, I think I'm pronouncing that right. He's a defensive end from Florida, and then you've got Brian Burns, who's an edge rusher from Florida State. So okay. if you're looking to improve up front, those are some options that you could go with. Uh, if by some miracle the Giants don't draft a quarterback in the first round, and uh, they should, or else they're going to be stuck in quarterback purgatory for another year, and you want to improve up front, at least to give Eli's a little bit of support, you could draft Jonah Williams, who's uh, out of Alabama. He's like your second best I think Kuiper has him as like the second best offensive tackle on the board right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that could be your best option if for some reason they decide to mess up and not go with a quarterback in the first round. I mean, most of the pieces for you guys are there on the offensive line. And as far as like position players go between Stevens and, and Odell, uh, Stevens, between uh, Saquon and Odell. But uh, I think a tackle like Williams is like the final piece of the puzzle for you guys. I just, uh, well, here's the thing. And, and I just want to address this quarterback thing right now. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know for sure if the Giants need to draft a quarterback this year. I think you're delusional if you don't think the Giants need to draft a quarterback But this I mean, year. shit. Like, what if we did trade for Rosen? Literally, or, literally, what or, do you want? Or, I don't know. What I do don't you know want? What Tell me what you want. Or Teddy Bridgewater. What do is you want? To be available? Or Terod Taylor is also going to be available. I just don't walk away from me. Why what are you doing do you this? want? I don't know. I don't know. You want everything and nothing for this team. Everything and nothing. Oh I don't understand. I just pick a quarterback. I just take one. Can't say Tyrod Taylor. No, you can't. Pick. Dwayne Haskins in the first round, and your problems start to go away. That's all. That is all. I don't want Dwayne Haskins. You I want a mobile quarterback. Okay. I want a, 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 then you have to a be Teddy Bridgewater then you have who to did risk. really well in New Orleans this year and learned like a lot of different skill sets and positions under that mentorship of Drew Brees. I, I want someone like that. I want a Kyler Murray. I want... You're not getting it, Kyle. I want Murray. everything. That's not happening. Yeah, I know you want everything and nothing for this damn team. I'm so upset. Pick Swain Haskins and things get easier. I promise they get easier. I want an offensive line. Because 
Jonah Williams then. I know. And then suffer through Eli Manning for one more year. I, yes, and I, then go with next year. I am anticipating suffering. You can't I, have I, everything at the same time. It does not make sense. And another thing about Trey Flowers, okay? I think the Patriots are going to just let him go. I need this right now. Yes. So, uh, I've been wrong before. But I oh, think many, 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 many times. times. So, my, my first instinct when, when I heard Flowers was free agent this year is that the Patriots were probably going to let him go. So, if you're going to be re signed by Bill, by Bill Belichick, you need to have a couple of criteria boxes checked off. You need to be durable. You need to have high future production estimates. You need to have character references. You need, most importantly, to be seen and not heard. And I think Trey Flowers, all four of those things, the Patriots are 8-1 in the playoffs when he starts. But Bill Belichick has let players go like Asante Samuel and uh, Dion Branch and Wes Welker and Denny Amendola and Dan Ward Jones and Richard Seymour. And I think they've been just fine. Do you think Sexy Jimmy's going back this year? Uh, there's a chance that he might be coming back, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But, you know, if you can give the money, go ahead. I still don't think you're the best team in your division. I didn't say we were. No, I know. But again, I just feel like you want everything and everything for this team at the same time. It just isn't going to happen. Look, here's because what... Because you are smarter than the Giants front office. I know I am. Yes. Here's what I've learned in my years of being a Giants fan. I can't want anything. Because if I want anything specific, I will be disappointed. Correct. Shall we move on? Oh my god, okay. That felt good. Hi. I needed that. It's been a stressful week. God, guys. All right, I'm just going to say what I need to say about this next topic. Okay. Topic number five. Yes. Bryce Harper goes to the Bills. He got signed by the Bills, guys. Literally the day after we did the show, he got signed by the Bills. The, the Phils. And by the Bills, we mean... The Bills. The, the, the Philadelphia Billies. The Philadelphia Billies. The Bills. Sign we're calling right I will say, though, uh, there was that news today. Would you like to elaborate on the fact that he doesn't know where he is? Yeah, he gave a press conference, and he was, he was, he was talking to the media, and he said the phrase, quote, trying to bring D.C. a championship while wearing a Phillies uniform. That's really funny. So he, he's wearing number three, which, if you're, familiar, if you're a Philadelphia sports person, is the same number as Allen Iverson. It's like he's, he thinks he's like the second coming of, of, of Christ or something like that. How many how many championships how many championships are the Phillies or the Padres going to win with these new players that they have Machado or uh, or Harper? None, zero. This doesn't make the Phillies any better. They still got to. I mean, yeah. My dad's them, commenting by the way. Hi, dad. You give them Bryce Harper. I mean, it's like the why haven't the, the Angels of Mike Trout, who's won MVP like four out of the last five years. When was the last time they did anything in the postseason? I just, to Bryce Harper, I quote Mitch on Modern Cam. Uh, I quote Mitch on Modern Family. Shame! 13 years, $330 million for Bryce Harper. That's a lot of fucking money. That's a lot of years. That's a lot. That's a lot. And he's got no out either. I know. That was my favorite no thing is that there's clause, no opt-outs. There's, there's nothing. That was excellent. Mm -mm. The dude is going to be 39 years old mm -hmm. when his contract is up. Yup. And if he doesn't retire beforehand, he's definitely going to retire after the contract expires. Yup. That's for sure. Yup. Either that or he's going to be like a shell of himself and sign with the Yankees and try to win a World Series or something like that. I mean, look, it, he's, he's young. Yeah, he's 26. He's young. Yep. He's like 12. He's like a minute older he's than I He's 26 years old. Yeah. Yeah. It was her birthday. Oh yeah. It was her birthday on I had a birthday party. It was her birthday on the first. Happy belated. Thank you. You're welcome. She's twenty four. Thank you. Yay. Yeah. So yeah, uh this doesn't make the this doesn't make the Phillies any better. Yeah. And Machado going to the Padres definitely doesn't make the Padres any better. Right. Uh baseball it, teams are dumb. Baseball is is I'm I'm really excited to start watching. Oh, me too. I'm excited to see what things hold this season. Yeah, preseason. I mean there are already preseason games like happening. Um, You're so football. Spring training. Spring training games. It's the same <laughs> fucking thing. It's not. I mean, yeah, it is, but it's. Oh my uh, God. There's an air about them, that's all. It's spring training. I'm just. It's going to be okay. Okay. 
What's the best thing you saw this week? Um, oh God. Well, Andrew showed me a video today that I've never seen before. Oh my God. Yes, 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 yes. Tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it. It's the worst thing I saw this week. Do it, do it, do it, do it. What's the guy's name? Uh, Chris Jones. It's Chris Jones. And the combine where his junk is like all over the place. Oh yeah. During, after his 40 yard dash. And I just, that's the worst thing I saw this week. Jaw, literally, if you... (laughs) <laughs> I couldn't stop talking or thinking or freaking the fuck out about it for about excellent. an hour. That's excellent. I just, and I'm still like, my skin is like quivering. Just, it's so. It's a jarring image. <laughs> it really is just, there's nothing, oh, there's nothing, I don't even think it's that funny i just oh it's hysterical and there's definitely nothing like your reaction sexy about it. no it's no, no. Just, it's just the dude's trying to get a job and prove his worth for a job and then that happens you're, you're like your reaction was the funniest thing i probably saw this week <laughs> it, was, it was aggressive but the best thing is like rich eisen who was the the broadcaster like trying We're to like, like trying cover to it laugh, up and then he's like making penis jokes yeah he's it's like just... they when they fall they fall long and hard and he's like everybody just trying to stand up straight and i just it's a giant face palm his junk fell out during the 40 yard dash it was a lot so that's the worst thing i saw this week and yeah. also probably the best thing andrew saw this week it's um, I'll, yes go ahead What's the, what best else? What's thing the best thing I saw this week? I uh, I taught Michael what the word derp means, and uh, I I showed him um, a dog, and I was like derp, and he's like, "What's that?" And now um, this has happened twice since I I told him this like two days ago, like what a derp is, mm-hmm. and he what I showed your... him a dog, and he's been like, "That's a derp." What is your definition of a derp? Like. Uh, like, uh, maybe like dorky, caught off guard, discomfort. <laughs> okay. That's more dorky, of, caught off guard, discomfort. It's like, it's like when you freeze frame someone when they're like yelling at someone and they're like, it's like, it's weird. I, it's, uh, Derp has always had this connotation of like dopiness for me. Yeah, it's dopey, but like accidentally, like so accidentally, like to the point that like there's like a deformity of sorts. It's like it's okay. very it's very elaborate, but you know it when you see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't believe that you just learned what a derp is. Yeah, he had no idea. That's funny. Oh, I realized we also never clarified. Oh, guys, uh, if you guys want to tweet at us, uh, don't forget our handle. It's at UFR Vodcast. Um, we have trivia for you guys. What? Oh, this was the best thing that I saw this week, and I wanted to share it. Oh, go ahead. Go okay, ahead. so I saw this thing, and it, it got us thinking. It's it's kind of like a trivia question slash, like, a metaphorical thought. It's like a riddle. Yeah. So what do an escalator and an electric toothbrush have in common? The answer will baffle you. It's like a like a like a, a clickbait ad. Yeah, we'll we'll share it next week on the show. But if you have any ideas, shoot us a, a DM. And we're or... thinking because there are other things that are involved in the answer. Well, other things. We're trying to think of other things other that might things, be involved. Yeah, we. In the the only thing that's come close so far that we've thought of is a vibrator. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's also not the perfect third option. Right. Um. But those Anyone are, who knows the answer, shoot us your thoughts on what else falls into this category. Yeah, those two are definitely like the escalator and the electric toothbrush are for sure like the two things that a hundred percent go yeah. together for sure. So that was probably the best thing I saw this week. I told I told you about the, the hockey fight that turned into a dance. Yes. Yes. That's yes. on my blog, by the way. It's on my, my monthly rap sheet, according to andrewblock.com. I will post that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the best thing that I saw this week. Yeah. Um, our bet continues for this week. Um, since next week is our last show of the season, we're going to call it after this week. Um, if Rob Gronkowski doesn't retire by next week's show, I have to eat an entire head of lettuce during next week's show. All signs point to me winning again. We need to start a tally for this thing of all the bets that I win. No. Or you win. Or I mostly me, I win. I was really hoping to make a bet wherein one of us is to get a tattoo. Uh, no, that's not going to happen. Yeah, you're not going to get one. I no, would. But sure not. I mean, you've got a couple. I've got like seven. I don't have any. 
I'm afraid of like the needles and like the permanence. Oh, they're fun. No, they're not. The commitment issues. No. Mr. Tinder. Yeah. All right, kids. Uh, <laughs> it's time to go. This has been fun. This has been really fun. This evolved and then de-evolved very quickly. It's just, <laughs> oh, God. Oh. I, I'm i so equally ready and not ready for this vacation we're about to take that's also not really a vacation. We only have one more episode, though, yeah. after this. Yep, and it's going to be sick, so yeah. y'all better tune in. Oh, I'm sad. We're really excited to have you. Everybody here. better watch next week. We Went want the camera. you. Everybody's going to watch next week. For the right. UFR Army. Nod, nod. Everybody's going to watch next week. Excellent. Thank you. Fuck off, Chelsea. This has been Under Further Review. I'm Kata. I'm Andrew. We'll see you all next week. That was not very good. No, it wasn't. Again. See yeah. you all next week. Bye! Bye! I actually finished mine this time. There was so much beer left. Did you finish it? Yeah. Holy <gasps> shit! Oh my god! It was good. Bye! Ah.